Hey everyone, it is the end of a long day and I'm here with Dr. Caitlin Wild, who is a friend and a colleague and also my social media guru. So I have learned so much from you in the, I think it's only been like two years that we have been working together. Yeah. Um, and we're both at the Fetch Conference in San Diego, last conference of the year. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Um, and I thought that I would pick your brain. I would love to help some of the veterinarians out there with social media because you have helped me so much. Thank you. Um, you know all these crazy <laughs> analytic things that are scary and intimidating to a lot of us who are embarking on social media. Sure. So can you give us maybe a tip or two sure. for general practitioners or anyone in the practice who's trying to do social media for their practice? Sure, sure. So uh, social media can be scary, uh, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, I think the biggest thing is getting your story out there. Like so telling your followers what makes you different, what makes you special because we're all veterinarians and we can all share the same helpful article about you know, top 10 Christmas toxins or whatever, um, which is still helpful right. to a lot, of, a lot of clients and there's a place for that. Um, but if that's all you're sharing, then there's a little bit of an opportunity that we're missing by not showing your personality, showing what makes you different, showing what makes you special because they want that bond. They want this wonderful creature that's a bond with them, they want you to be a part of that. Yeah. Um, and the only way to do that is to put yourself on video or photo. Um, and that's, that's scary for some vets, but it doesn't have to be that bad. Uh, and I have found that a lot of my technicians, you know, because they're a little, they were a little bit more social media savvy, at least in their personal lives. Sure. So they they taught me how to take a good selfie, like how yeah. to get the angle right and so stuff like you that. You have to go like, up. For yeah, sure. and like, like you know, to down. use the the buttons on the side. Don't use that. So yeah. a lot of the times, if maybe you're not interested in doing the social media, there might be someone in your practice who can Absolutely. at least help you get the pictures, and then you can add the story and things like that. But I think making it authentic and real yeah. has been very helpful. It's a sure. little bit noisy in the convention yeah. hall, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, I think you're exactly right. So finding somebody that's passionate about it is really important. Um, I think it's really essential to find somebody that has that interest. Um, in most practices, I think it works best if there's a team, like a yeah. social media team, because you know, just because you're the veterinarian doesn't mean that your your staff, I'm sorry, that your followers might not also want to see your staff. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of techs have been there uh, are as essential part of the practice as a veterinarian. So it can be a mixture of both. But having a technician or a receptionist or assistant or another vet that's also interested, you guys can brainstorm, you can play off each other. It helps to be able to share that responsibility, right? And you don't also want one person's yeah view uh, being projected out there so it can't be only one person's culture that's going out to social media it's really the practice's culture and that's best told from kind of a mix of, of perspectives so I think having somebody that's interested number one makes you do it yeah and number two helps divide out the responsibility and number three helps give you a more representative flavor to your culture yeah. that's going and that's and one of the things that I think is helpful is I try to pay attention to what I click on and yeah, what sure. I like and stuff like that and I try to think well like almost reverse engineer it in a way oh, sure. but like well I really like that and so sometimes I'll say hey can we do a post like that like, yeah. so oh yeah. we have to tell them about your page so <laughs> uh, she has this awesome um, closed Facebook group I do. and mm -hmm. it is a great resource and so I have picked up a lot of tips and tricks there it's, and yeah. it's been really fun for some yeah. of our colleagues so yeah. what's the best way for them to find that link um, so on my Facebook page for the social DVM you'll see the link for the closed group which is called social DVMers uh, which is just open to veterinarians right. who are having issues and we can share yeah. ideas and tips and resources yeah and there's a lot of good apps out there what are you oh, sure. yeah, tell, what's your favorite What's oh, your favorite? Come on. Oh. That's so hard. That's a. Um, What's your favorite pick app? Like to make pictures. Pictures app uh, is Pixart. Right. Uh, because it's free. Which I use because of her. Yeah. It's free. It's easy. You can edit things. But you can put your hospital logo yeah, on it. The logo. That's the easiest one I found to be able yeah. to put the logo on if you don't already have like a transparent vector. PNG type file. You're losing me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, and that's, that's because a lot of people don't. They just have this this file, and it ends up being like their logo with a white box around it. Uh, but the Pixar app will let you blend that in, so it can make it look that's like really professional. You know, look a little, yeah. little snazzy. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> What's your second favorite app? My second favorite app. Uh, is probably the Facebook Pages app. Mm -hmm. I know it's boring. It's boring. So if you're using your Facebook regular app. 
to run your social media for your practice. Yeah. You're not going to be able to get as much insights. You're not going to be able to. Yeah. So you should have a separate Facebook yeah. page from your personal Facebook page, and that is, and they use the yeah. Pages app because you can accidentally, using the Pages app, you cannot accidentally post something from your own page to your practice page or vice versa. Right. Like if you've had a couple too many margaritas, you can't mix that up. So why is she looking at me? Just saying. But uh, so yeah, you're gonna get a lot more information. You can see a lot. I think you could just use it more efficiently if you're using that pages app. Yeah, and then um, Canva is another. So you guys should check check out. Even on so like you make these beautiful info like Thank these. You. I do events so that you guys can find out where I'm speaking, and she makes these incredible. Um, Graphics. graphics graphics using yeah. um, Canva. Canva and Canva. I have to say like it was a little bit intimidating at first but I feel like even a novice like me can figure out how to yeah. do some basic ones yeah. um, drag and, and drop it's like Photoshop for dummies like yeah. which is why I use it yeah because Photoshop is very hard yeah. I'm a veterinarian I don't know how to use Photoshop. and I think look at looking for sources of inspiration like mm -hmm. you and the different you know Facebook pages and again my advice is always to see what you're interested like sure. what am I clicking on what am I interested right. in right and, absolutely because yeah. you're probably like I'm my own demographic, right? right, as, right. as a veterinarian, like my ideal client is me, someone like me, someone that is my age group, my education level, my level of like real ridiculous obsession about my dog or right. my cat or whatever. Um, you know, so that, that kind of feeds into, if it's important to you, then it's going to be impactful to them because they're gonna get that yeah. flavor from you a little bit. Yeah, um, and so where can people find you? Where can they find more? Uh, I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all of the others that the and I don't need, I didn't even tell you I was going to ask you this but if people are looking for like if people wanted to get your insight and to do you consult for small clinics and sure. things like that yeah. If you, yeah and so do you do like a one-time thing or is it always a you do a little bit of both I think it's a little bit of both but I think um, ultimately every practice is different so I don't have like a one one stop fits all, one well, stop no, fits all. No, but I think but. it's really intimidating, and it's one thing, I think, to be good at maybe, like, maybe you're good at telling the story, and maybe mm -hmm. you're good at the graphics and things like that, but I'll be honest, like, a lot of the Facebook analytic and stuff like that can be a little bit intimidating, and they want you to boost every post, and I'm always like, right. should I boost this? And you're like, no, don't boost that one, <laughs> and stuff like that. So I think sometimes it's good to say, okay, well, I'm going to do part of this, and then maybe outsource an expert, and or sure. get their input on things like that, and I think that... I think it's important to know that you don't have to do it all on your own. Like yeah. you can be a clinician, get some of the content, and then have somebody else right. sort of help with the other side of yeah. it. I think in the next really like five, ten years, that's going to be. I mean, that's a degree now. You can get your degree in like social media marketing and management. That's crazy. And the like analytics of web design and Google and AdWords and pay-per-click and all that kind of stuff. It's really scientific and so um, it's hard to keep up with because it yeah. also changes all the time. Right? And that's <laughs> it. Yeah, like they're always changing the algorithms and sure. things like that. And I'll be honest, when I did it, I tried to do everything myself in the beginning mm -hmm. and I think that's why I got really frustrated and that's why I brought Caitlin on board and I don't think mm -hmm. there's any shame in like telling people that you have someone help you with your page mm -hmm. because it, you know, I didn't go to veterinary school to learn how to do social media right. and so it's a brand new area of, sure. and I enjoy it I like creating the post <laughs> but um there's some weirdness going on here this is what happens when you do stuff after hours late at night in late the convention night. center <laughs> but I do think that there's no shame in asking for help and doing what you're good at and then taking that team approach yeah yeah I think you know that's what I'm passionate about is getting veterinarians and veterinary professionals to know what what to do and how to do it because there's just a little technical hill but yeah. I think most veterinary team members can get over it can, yeah. can climb that hill but I think that it's important to do that and to want to do that and to know how to do that but then it's smooth sailing from there because they'll be able to take their practice to the next level yeah so yeah oh all there's right like a frat party going I on know. here I know. we'll be back no okay <laughs> <laughs> All right, Caitlin, you are awesome. Thank I have you. learned so much from you, and I appreciate your friendship. Oh, um, and it is happy hour. Ditto. So Bye. we are going to have a drink, <laughs> not with them. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We'll see you all soon. Guess what? We didn't leave. <laughs> so once those uh, four-year-olds left, there were some young boys. I don't think they were here for the veterinary conference. But once they <laughs> left, we were sitting here talking, and... 
I was like, Caitlin, you have to tell everybody that. That's some really good information. So she has two more things that she wants to share with us. Um, and this stuff is free, and um, I normally pay for this. <laughs> so give it to me. No. So you had a couple other good things that I yeah. think are really worth sharing to our veterinarians interested in, in, in why so. should they do social media. I hope so. So I really think the reason that I'm passionate about social media and why I think veterinarians should be passionate about social media is because in our current culture that's how a lot of people are getting their information that's how they're finding out new things and new tips and they're going to their phone first they're going to their you know not necessarily even Facebook but just their internet search mm -hmm. and they're looking for information about their pets they're they're coming to their phone or their internet for information and veterinarians have such an opportunity to put that out there and we're not doing a good job of that no. in my opinion so I mean yeah there's a fair amount of marketing that's involved and we all want you know everybody to come love us and and, and be wonderful uh, and have these great relationships but part of that is educating pet owners and so I really think that social media can do that and so if we're able to take that piece and to educate social educate people via social media then we're gonna have better educated pet owners which means healthier pets so at the end of the day, it is still accomplishing our main goal as a veterinarian, right? We're helping people, and we're helping pets. And in general, clients turn to their veterinarians for information. And so I think, you know... I you, hope so. No, they do. <laughs> I mean, in general, they have. Yeah. But now we're, we are competing with the internet, mm -hmm. and we're competing with Dr. Google. And so I do think that mm -hmm. we... We, and we don't have to create all the content. You no. were just telling me like some great resources yeah. that where you can direct people or put that information on your site to yeah. give people the information that you want them to have. So right. if they're asking questions about diet and vaccinations mm -hmm. and new medications or you know new outbreaks and things like that, sure. you, so where, what do you suggest? So uh, a good starting place is AVMA has an entire library of animal health awareness events. So you can never miss Hairball Awareness Day ever again, which is There's my... There's my favorite hair, holiday. There's a hairball awareness. Hairball awareness day. I think it's in August, like August 29th. Why do I not Check know this? Check your calendars. But you know, all those fun holidays. I love it. I, and, and those are just goofy things. And, but, and, that, and on your um, site that you're talking, every month in the beginning of the month, Caitlin lists all the different yeah. ones. And you don't have to do all of them. Right. But there are some really There's fun some ones opportunity. out there. Well, and then it's like, you know, for November was Cancer Awareness Month. So that's Obviously an opportunity for us. To, yeah, to, to try to spread some some information and put some information out there that's reliable. Yeah. And so finding reliable information, most of the, the drug companies have fairly decent um, information that we can can utilize. Um, PetHealthNetwork.com, which is sponsored by IDEX, has a lot of really good stuff, all written by veterinarians. There's lots of things out there. Um, and the other that thing that's really nice that I like about the different holidays and stuff like that or the is that it gives you an idea like what to do this month. This is a starting point. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And you don't have to be bound by that. Like, right. I'm doing cancer awareness every month, but sure. when it comes up, that's another opportunity. Right. Or so if you want to talk about heartworm preventative or there's a dental month, right? Yeah, like in April or something. It? April? February. Oh, you're such an oncologist. <laughs> I try. I try. Um, yeah, there is a heartworm right. awareness month. And, and things like that. Yeah, so, yeah. But you can use that. You don't have to be bound by it, but you yeah. can use it as inspiration because a lot of people always say to me, like, well, what am I going to post? What's my right. content and stuff so, like yeah. that? And the it's other a good thing, starting point. Yeah, I love yeah. that. I love that. Yeah. Now can we go to happy hour? Yeah. Or did you have one more thing? I don't think I had anything else. Oh, yeah. I did. Uh, I have see? one more thing. See? See? Okay, as a good story. This is point. why you, like, we brainstorm. You're like, wait, I have four more things for you to do. <laughs> Write it all down. <laughs> so one thing, an easy thing you could take away right now that I think would be really impactful if you just take a video of why you became a veterinarian. So How long should it be? 20, 30, 40 seconds. Minutes? <laughs> Minutes. I mean, I could go on and on, like <laughs> but cats. You I'm joking. <laughs> Who doesn't love cats? Corgis. Cat videos. Hello. Um, yeah, so, I mean, really. And then put that on my Put page. that on there. And, and that's a great starting point for people to get to know you, get to know more about your practice, know you as a person. It's going to be great engagement. And you'll get over the hump. Like, it's not so bad. It's not so scary. It's really easy. Just if use I can iPhone. do it, anyone can do it. iPhone, 30-second video. Why are you a vet? Or why are you a vet tech? And a tripod stand. Get a tripod stand. You can get them at like online. The I got mine. I got mine at Best Buy. It has this cute little remote. I it's love so it. Adorable. So we can turn it off. We can't show it to them because it's. Oh yeah, wait, I can show it. mine. Oh wait, I have one too. Hold please. Hold. I taught the social media. She did. Person something fun. It's fabulous. Look. 
That's the little tripod. It's magnetic. Yeah. So you can and then you see that's cool because you can put it on. I've taken um, like continuous videos in radiology, like oh, with my dog yeah, getting yeah. X-rays and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So and that's pretty cool. So lots of fun things. And again, definitely like you are one of the best resources out there. So well, people have you. to find you. I'm really nerdy about it. I yeah. can't help it. She gets really, and you make those really fun videos about all the different like things that you could do in the exam room and stuff like that wide angle stuff so check out caitlin caitlin i appreciate your time thanks and now i now swear we're, a drink. we're going to have a hot drink obviously yes yes a hot non-alcoholic drink thanks everyone bye, bye.